Okay, good afternoon to all of you. Dear students, you are welcome in this class. Now we are going to discuss impacts of impacts of organic farming on different aspects and what are different components of organic farming. We will discuss all these uh, subjects in detail. And this is uh, last lecture, third and last lecture on organic farming. Or you can say this is final lecture on organic farming. So here we are going to learn about the impacts of organic farming practices or organic farming on food quality, crop productivity, environment or climate, soil health and economics. How organic farming impacts or affects these. Uh, you are going to have some understanding of the various pillars or components of organic farming. What are different pillars of organic farming? And then scope and constraints of organic farming. A scope here means where, organ, where and under what conditions organic farming can be done in India. Constraints here means limitations of organic farming. So overall, you are going to see impacts on six different aspects, food quality, productivity, income, soil and ecosystems, climate and air, and ground and surface, surface water. Or you can see just uh, impact of organic farming on water. So from this discussion, you can also extract the advantages of organic farming. And also from these, this discuss, discussion, you can also extract certain uh, demerits or limitations of organic farming. So first of all, we start with the nutritional quality and safety of organic product. So in the beginning, we should know what is quality, quality of the product. So quality has different meanings for different people. So for some people, quality may be just physical quality, physical quality of the product, the shape, the size, the color, color, color may decide the quality sometimes because whenever you go to market to buy any product, first you see the color, then you see the size, taste also of course part of quality. So these are certain physical parameters and that is very subjective. It depends upon individual. For example, uh, you can see that uh, some people may like red apple, some may like uh, uh, green apple, some may like yellow apple or golden apple and so many things. So uh, they do not consider the nutrient, nutritional content in apple, just they see the color. And some people see just the size. If you go to a market to buy potato, you will see, you will, you will always reject the small sized potato or you will also reject if they are too big. So therefore grading is done to make them attractive, to make them saleable so that it appeals to the people. It appeals to the people's eyes. As somebody has already said that beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. So many times quality is decided by individual, but under most of the circumstances, it is nutritional quality which matters or which is important. So here nutritional quality means the content of nutrients. So with respect to human beings or with respect to vegetative materials, the nutritional quality means protein, what proportion of protein is there, fat is there, minerals are there, or vitamins are there, or say other constituents are there. And one important constituent of quality is antioxidants. So what is the status of those materials in the product that decide the quality? Generally speaking, if a particular product contains more minerals and interest of a person is in more minerals, then for him or her, the, the product, the food product or agricultural product containing higher level of minerals will be of better quality. See, some people uh, like uh, different kind of rices, rices, that does not mean that uh, one is superior, other is inferior in nutritional quality. See, some people in India like to have basmati rice, but at the same time, 
there are good number of people who like other kind of rices throughout the India. So that does not mean that a particular rice is inferior or superior in quality. That depends upon individual choice also. But overall, for most of the situation, nutritional quality is content of nutrients in a particular food product. Now you see, uh, this is the paper and most of the time uh, consumer thinks that organic products are having better quality, they are better in taste. But there are also people who consider that there is no uh, nutritional difference in organic and conventional product. There are many scientists who opine that organic products and conventional products, both are equally rich in nutrients or both contains almost same level of nutrients. Nutrients means protein, carbohydrate, fat, lipid, or your minerals, vitamins, or antioxidants. But a great number of people or scientists also say that organic products are richer in nutrients. So this subject is still debatable, debatable. And consumer think if there is no nutritional differences, differences in nutritional quality, why should I pay more for the organic product if there is no difference? But that is not the case. If this is the case, then people have bought, people would buy uh, only conventional product. So there are some quality, quality differences in organic and conventional product. And later on, this paper suggests conclusively that organic plant products contain more dry matter. If they have more dry matter, then more minerals like iron, magnesium. And they also contain more antioxidants. Example is phenols and salicylic acid. These products are uh, phenols and salicylic acid. They are part of antioxidants. So there are number of molecules which are considered as antioxidant. So now question comes, why organic products contain more dry matter? So yesterday, Kunal was saying about nitrogen. So nitrogen is, uh, run, ex, there is excess use of nitrogen under conventional systems. I told you ratio of Punjab, 32 is to nine is to one, or 32 is to eight is to one, something near, near to it. So that means uh, relatively more nitrogen is used. If more nitrogen is used, then your plants will have succulency, more succulency. They are more succulent, they are more leafy, and more greenness in them which may invite insect, not just insect pests and diseases, that will also dilute the concentration of minerals or dry matter. So that material will be watery and it will contain less percentage of dry matter in conventional product, in organic product, you will have more percentage of dry matter. If you have higher percentage of dry matter, then naturally you will have higher percentage of minerals. So organic products are comparatively richer in minerals compared to conventional products. Number two, organic animal products. Animal products may be milk, may be meat, and they are byproducts. From milk, you can make variety of byproducts. Similarly, from meat also, you can make variety of byproducts. So if you make ice cream, if you make card, if you make any material or any byproduct from the milk, uh, all the milk and milk products would contain more polyunsaturated fatty acid compared to saturated fatty acid materials in cows which are raised organically. Or simply you can say organic cow. Organic cow means cows which are raised or raised through organic methods. So this is advantage. This is good for your heart, our heart. 94 to 100% of organic food does not contain any pesticide residues. Means there is no pesticide residue or heavy metals in organic product. But still you see up to 6% of the organic product may contain pesticide residue and uh, heavy metals, etc. So you can see that relatively compared to conventional products, organic products are safer. So you, hear, uh, you can see here that there is about 6% chance that organic products may contain pesticide residue. So where from these pesticides will come? In organic products, 
it is likely to have about 6% products may have uh, pesticide residue. What would be the reason for this? Any guess? So the simple so is to convert. Uh, um... yeah. So yes. to convert our uh, conventional uh, agriculture land to organic agriculture land, total three years is required. But uh, it is not uh, exact that the total land will be uh, cleaned by, by the residues. So maybe some residues is there and this may be contained in the products also. Thinking is good. Thinking is excellent. Uh, you are going on right line, but, but uh, I, I cannot say that your statement is wrong. Your statement may be correct. Nobody has proved it, but generally people consider that in three years, everything will become clear and those toxic material will be out of soil. Uh, no such study has been done, but I, I, at the same time, I do not say that your statement is wrong. Your statement is correct, uh, but may not be directly related to the answer. Uh, actually, what happens, we get rainfall. Rainfall or irrigation water can be source of pesticide. When you extract water from the ground or from rivers or canal, you take water, then that can contaminate the land. This is one. And so, or also rainfall, you know, rainfall. When rain falls, uh, uh, it can, may contain some, uh, your air pollution is there, air is polluted. Air may contain some pesticides, you may be knowing. Pesticide molecules may be there in the air or some other poisonous material that can come with rainfall water. And India is lucky. I tell you, in one, one case, uh, in the state of Karnataka, there is one river, I think, small river, very small river, and that, that contains a water which is very, very rich in potassium. If you apply that water, you need not to apply any uh, potassium to the soil. I need to search the, the place, but that water is rich in potassium. So sometimes your water may uh, uh, bring the pesticide. And secondly, there may be movement of machinery. Machinery sometimes, machinery is not cleaned. Suppose a tractor is roaming or doing puddling, puddling in conventional field, uh, and then immediately you bring to the organic field. Then it can bring some mud, some soil to the organic area and then it can bring some pesticides. Organic vegetables contain far less nitrate, about 50% less. This is true, particularly leafy organic veg vegetable like spinach. Spinach contains very high levels of nitrates, particularly when you use excess nitrogen under conventional farming. And those nitrates can be, can be poisonous to children, young children. And organic, if you, if you grow those vegetables, leafy vegetables under organic system, they contain 50%, at least 50% less nitrate. So it is good. So these are the four major advantages. Other is that organic products are tasty in nature. They are considered better in taste and compared to conventional product. There are a number of studies conducted world over, which has already proved that organic products are tasty in nature. So for example, one study, I forgot the name of the worker, but they did one study on rats. They divided rats into two groups. One group was fed organic food and other group, say equal number of rats, consider 10 each group, 10 in each group. So same quantity, same quantity, say 200 gram. Uh, food was given to both groups. One was organic food, other was conventional food. So the rates which were fed with organic food finished the product or food much early than the conventional food. So that means it was tasty. Therefore, rats finish the food early. So such kind of experiments are conducted to see the taste of products. Uh, now see antioxidants. There may be some debate, there may be some controversy or uh, there may not be consensus on minerals or fats or proteins, but almost all the workers, all the scientists, all the people involved in organic farming, they agree that organic products are rich in antioxidants. So there is nobody, uh, no paper I have seen where you will find that antioxidants level are 
equal in conventional and organic products. So antioxidants are higher in organic products and they are about on an average, if you take 50% higher antioxidants level in organic food compared to chemical food or chemical means conventional food. So many, many studies are there and you might be knowing that antioxidants are the products, products in plants, uh, which if they are eaten by human beings, they clean our blood. They remove the free radicals or poisonous material from our blood. Or you can say they, they are doing washing, washing of our blood and they are cleaning it, antioxidants. For example, in papaya, you have papain, something like that, papain, uh, if I am correct. Similarly, in tomato, you have lycopene. So the uh, generally, antioxidants give color to the fruits and vegetables. Some vegetables, some fruits, you will find purplish, purple in color. Like grape, you have purple colored grape. So many times, those colors are because of presence of certain pigments or antioxidants. So those are actually antioxidants. Examples may be phenolic acids, flavonoids, still beans, flavones, flavonols, anthocyanins, variety of organic products are there, which are part of antioxidant. So they are all are kept under the group antioxidants. So these healthy uh, elements are there in the food, organic food, 50% on an average. So now you have seen overall that organic products have better quality. We can conclude overall, they have better quality and they are safe compared to the conventional product. What happens to the yield? Yield. So do we have same yield in organic systems as do we have in conventional system? This also has been matter of debate. People who have not done any work on organic farming, they claim that yields are same. Even in first year, you will get the same uh, yield. Many times people give jhansa, you know, jhansa. Jhansa shabd is very common. So they give you jhansa that yields are same, but that is not the case. So actually yields are lower, lower initially. For first year, you don't count first year because it is not organic or it is not conventional also. It is in between these two. So when your organic time starts after three years, uh, then there is decline in the yield or you get less yield in organic system compared to the conventional system. The yield, uh, differences may be about say 13 to 34 percent or you can say that in organic farming uh, if you compare the yield from the conventional farming under the identical condition identical condition here means under the same kind of climate and soil if you can uh, compare them the yields are 15 to 35 percent lower in organic farming compared to conventional farming. So there is gap, yield gap is there. Organic farming gives you less yield, particularly up to six or seven years. Particularly initial six to seven years, you will get less yield in organic farming, organic system con compared to conventional system. And generally this gap is, this lower yield is 15 to 35%. 15% yield decrease is in case of rain-fed farming or, or farming where you use less of or uh, less of fertilizer, less of pesticide. However, under uh, intensive farming or intensive farming condition where you use more of fertilizer, more of pesticides, the yield dec decline or difference in yield is more. Take the two case. One case, you take case of Rajasthan, or uh, where farmers use less, less pesticide, less fertilizer because of less water. But you take case of Punjab, where there is plenty of water, underground water is there, ground water is there, the canals are there, tube wells are there, electricity is free. So water is there. So those farmers apply a lot of fertilizer. And if you apply more of fertilizer, you also require more of pesticide. So if you do convert those land of Punjab intensive farming into organic farming, the yield decline is more. Yield decline may be 35% or even more. This 15 to 35% is the mean value, general value. Uh, you, you need not to go up to the exact figure, figure, 
it can be 38%, it can be 30%, but towards higher side. So yield decline is more under intensive farming systems and yield decline is less under, you see, uh, you can say extensive farming system where you use less of fertilizer, less of pesticide. I, I think you got this point and after sixth or seventh year, you will get almost equal yield or there are some conditions or some instances where about 10 to 15% higher yields have been obtained in organic crop compared to conventional crop. Now I have a question to you. Why there is uh, more yield decline in Punjab than in Rajasthan? Or compared to rain-fed farming, the yield decline is more in irrigated farming or irrigated crop production. What is the reason? If you understood the question, just reply, give, give any idea, any wild idea, any vague idea, no problem. Uh, sir, in case of uh, rain-fed farming, the use of uh, fertilizer is less. That, that means in case of conventional agriculture in rain-fed area, the yield is naturally less. But uh, in case of uh, Punjab, that is intensive farming, the yield is high due to more application of fertilizer or pesticide. So if we convert the land of Punjab into organic agriculture, the yield decline will be more because there is a high difference. But in case of rain-fed farming, as it is naturally less yield yielding land, so the yield decline will be less, like 15%. Very good. Your answer is about 90% part you have covered, 10% you left. 10% gap is there, I feel that gap. So you are right, he's absolutely right that uh, in rain-fed area, you use less of pesticide or less of fertilizer and in other extreme, you use more, more of fertilizer, more of pesticide. So actually what happens, the soils of Punjab, just Punjab here is an, a representation of intensive agriculture where you take many crops using high fertilizer and high pesticide doses. So what happens when you convert to organic? Convert to organic, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of, lot of time to recover or to repair those soils. Those soils have become addicted to fertilizer, addicted to pesticides. So every time they want more and more. So the conversion is slow. Conversion or adaptation to organic condition is slow. There may be death of microbes or, or biological bio, uh, organisms. Biological organism population may be less in those soils because of heavy use of pesticide and fertilizers. So therefore, it takes time to regain the, uh, regain the uh, strength. So I, I, I can give you one example that, uh, and you will laugh in the end, that there was a, uh, the, uh, Arijit, Arijit went to, Shimla and he has fallen sick when he visited Shimla. He has fallen sick and many doctors came. Many doctors came and they could not succeed in treating him. And Arijit was from Delhi and he moved to Shimla. So all the doctors failed, but a general physician who did not have any degree walking through the, the place where he was there, Arijit was there. And then uh, he asked, where, where are you from? He replied from Delhi, okay. So he asked uh, the people to bring eight or 10 motorcycles and asked the people to make smoke. And then the motorcycles were started and smoke was created. And within two hours, three hours, Arijit uh, got his sickness over. He was okay now. So what does it mean that if you are living in a, in a, in a bad environment like Delhi, and if you go to good environment like Shimla, then you may fall sick because you are living in polluted area and you are adapted, almost adapted to that. If you get good things, uh, you will not uh, adjust immediately. You will take time. Whether if you come from good to bad, bad also, it takes time or bad to good, it takes time. See, uh, 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 my, my children are growing in Delhi. They are drinking milk, which is, we don't know whether it is milk or not, whether it is adulterated milk or whether it is synthetic milk. You must be listening. Uh, you must be knowing that there are synthetic milk. So my children or Delhi children are used to have 
uh, this mother dairy milk names are different names are there amul is there so many names are there so they they are addicted or they have used this milk only and whenever they go to village where they get the the pure milk the pure milk directly milk from the cow or buffalo and then they say this is not good milk good milk this is not tasty i don't like this so you can see you can see the situation in the country or any place where people are addicted to you see the synthetic things which which may not be organic which may not be the uh, natural things so this is the situation that it takes time to recover recover back to normal condition because soil is chemically polluted so it takes time therefore in case of rain fed conditions they were using less of pesticide less of fertilizer so their their soil was already very clo close to organic conditions so therefore it was almost uh, similar not exactly similar but very close to the organic soils therefore yield decline will be less in rain fed system compared to organic system so you can read these uh, lines i have given you i will share all the presentation before i end the class this is the study from rodale institute the farming system trial they have conducted a very long term trial in rodale rodale institute usa and they compared the organic and conventional systems in usa so you can see the green bars the green bars are for organic and gray colored bars are for conventional farming so first you see the yields pounds per acre per year whatsoever it is you consider kilogram per acre so here you can see the yields are almost same in both organic as well as conventional and this may be after fourth or fifth years of adoption and then you see profit green the more profit in organic compared to conventional energy input is less in organic less energy input in organic and more in conventional what does it tell less energy means you need you will be creating less pollution first thing second thing low energy in organic means uh, your investment will be less how compared to conventional farming hence your profit will be more uh, compared to conventional last you see greenhouse gases emission so it is less in organic more in conventional so here you can see that greenhouse gas emission less means so it is more much more environment friendly than the conventional farm so economics is good environment is good and your productivity or food is good so you can say it is sustainable agriculture and friends here i want to tell you that rodel institute also made one study where they have proved that suddenly there is drought drought in the country in the case of drought you will get more yield from the organic system compared to conventional system if there is drought and irrigation facilities are minimum or are not available then you will get more yields in organic compared to inorganic or chemical farming under identical conditions so why it is so and can anyone explain that yields are more in organic compared to conventional when you have drought or low water availability in conventional farming for uh, acting of fertilizer we need water and in organic farming we don't need much water because we are not using the fertilizer okay so at least you have touched the aspect of water so it is mainly because of water so because of water here means in the organic systems you regularly use organic materials conventional system you not you do not so frequently add organic matter so generally organic farming the soils have more organic matter than conventional farming there is no doubt about it organic name is coming from organic materials you are adding to the soil so this organic matter increases water content in soil a soil having more organic matter more carbon will hold more water compared to the soil which is having low organic matter so here organ that means the they were better adapted to the water stress organic soils were better adapted to water stress compared to conventional farming so here the higher levels of organic matter may have accumulated or may have conserved more water in the soil therefore crops suffered less compared to conventional farming so this is the reason and not only this in 2015 there was a uh, there was a big uh, flood in 
uh, Chennai. Anybody, uh, if anybody is there from Chennai or Tamil Nadu, he or she may be knowing that during 2015, the Chennai, the whole Chennai was full of water. The boats were flowing in the uh, in the city. <laughs> if you uh, if you remember, so that time yeah, around the Chennai also, but there was news that some organic rice grown in in and around. A Chennai area survived the flood also. So there are reports that organic crops can survive floods also. They can survive drought also. And uh, there are some hidden advantages. And one advantage I tell you, in the same year, 2015, yes, the cotton crop, cotton crop in the country was wiped out. You can see, you can browse uh, through Google. The crop in Himachal, Haryana, Punjab, Rajasthan was killed, totally killed by white fly. But organic crop in the same area survived. There were many good stories about organic farming that organic cotton survived because that white fly was not that much invasive in organic crops. Uh, there, it was not a BT crop, first thing. Second thing that it was grown in organic system and it had more friend, friendly insects. Therefore, organic crops survived. And you can see the data uh, on internet that it was a big failure of cotton crop, of which was BT cotton. <laughs> because BT cotton was made against the pest bollworm, bollworm. It was not resistant or tolerant to white fly. White fly was a minor pest of cotton, but that year it has suddenly become a major pest of cotton. Therefore, it suffered. So how many genes you will insert? There may be 60 insect pests that can affect cotton. So how many genes you will insert? So that is a question and you can think over it. Now you see this is uh, yield trial is at IRA grain yield. This is uh, just, I want to show you the productivity of organic crops. So this is average of 10 years. The experiment, organic experiment is started in 2003. And since 2006, it was converted to organic. And you can see there were two systems, rice wheat system and rice wheat bone bean system. So you can see rice, wheat, and total yield, and then average yield. Just see the rice yield. Rice yield is 4.26, 4.51. So it is on an average, you can say the average yield of rice for 10 years was 4.1 tons per hectare. And remember, this is basmati rice. So we compared it with the conventional rice also. So we found that yield was almost similar to the conventional rice, this organic rice yield, 4.1 tons. Another thing in case of wheat, the average yield was 3.7 ton, which was really lower than the conventional. In conventional wheat, we get at least 4.5 tons per hectare in IRA, or maybe five tons per hectare. But here the yield was less for organic wheat, even for 10 years. This is one point. And second point you can see, if you introduce mung bean in the cropping system, then how rice and wheat yield change? So you can see from 4.1, rice yield increased to 4.68 if you have mung bean. This is another interesting point. And the wheat yield increased from 3.7 to 8 through to 4.05. And if you see the total yield, total yield of the system rice wheat, 7.8 tons and 8.73 tons. So you can say around 0.8 to 0.9 tons per hectare of uh, yield of rice plus wheat was increased. So this, that is quite interesting. So here are the main messages that in cereal-based system, if we include the legume, that is very, very beneficial. We also tested some nutrients in this case. Nutrients we tested, IFIM, vermicompost, crop residues, biofertilizer. And we found that overall, farmyard manure plus uh, crop, crop residues plus biofertilizer. These three elements should be integrated to supply nutrients in rice wheat and rice wheat crop, mung bean cropping system. And you need to add the less quantity of manures in rice wheat mung bean system than in rice wheat system. So these were major conclusion of the study. Another interesting point, you can see the, uh, I made one statement that the basmati rice yields were uh, equal in organic as well as in conventional. However, wheat yields were lower compared to conventional farming for the simple reason that uh, it is mostly hot period. When we grow rice in Northern India, 
it is a lot of uh, high temperatures are there, so no problem. Your organic matter will decompose easily. Water is also there, rainfall is there, moisture, moisture is there in the soil. So decomposition rate of organic materials are faster. Nutrient supply is better. However, in winter months when wheat is grown, or any winter crop you grow in Northern India, you will get less yield compared to conventional, even after many years of uh, ad adoption. You will still get lower yield because in winter months, temperatures are low. They can go up to say, as low as two or two or three degrees centigrade. Or under those conditions, decomposition rate of organic matter is slow, so nutrient supply restricted, and yields are low in winter crops compared to summer crops or rainy season crops under identical conditions. So now we can... So uh, we were comparing the productivity of organic and conventional farming. Means we are comparing productivity of field crops, mostly field crops or vegetable crops. So you can see here, this is uh, from uh, Merit, Indian Institute of Farming System Research, Modi from Merit. Dr. Ravi Shankar is there. His name, name is incorrectly written here. I'm sorry. He is Ravi Shankar, not Sankat. Ravi Shankar, Dr. Ravi and Ravi Shankar. He's involved in organic farm, farming research for a very, very long time in the, in the country. He is representing India at national level at many platforms, this organic farming. So uh, he compiled the data from different centers. So they are having a project which is network project on organic farming. So they conduct one experiment at several places. They have about 20 places in India and they conduct experiment and maybe for last over 20 years, they are doing this work. And when the six crop cycles were over, were completed, or you, you, you can say six years of organic farming were completed, then they compiled the results of uh, organic farming yields, yields in organic farming. So they published a, a book also. So I just borrowed this data from that book or paper. So you can see here different crops are there and number of experiments and trials and, and mean values and the range and then crops and then organic over range. Means how much is the mean yield and how much is the range? Organic over inorganic. So you can see basmati rice, for example, 104% means 4% excess than the conventional farming. Uh, rice 100% means equal yield. Maize 110 means 10% more in organic compared to conventional. So likewise, you see the winter crops, but here it is not 100. It is less than 100. In wheat, it is 93, means 7% less yield than the conventional wheat. Mustard 93, 7% less. Now go to the other side, you see okra. Okra, it is okay, 118%. Okra is grown in uh, uh, summer also. Chili, 109. So you see most of the crop, ginger, even ginger responded much better. Here it was 120. And in turmeric, it was 146, means 46% higher. But again, in winter crops like lentil, potato, potato radish, you get less yields. So next slide, you can see the conclusion of this study. Uh, conclusion is that yield of basmati rice, soybean, garlic, peanuts, cauliflower, and tomato crops was four to 6% higher than the conventional farming. I'm sorry, the, it is after eighth cycle. ICR, IIFSR, Modi Pram, completion of eight crop cycles under NPOs. So when eight crop cycles or eight years completed, they compiled this data, yield of basmati rice, soybean, garlic, peanuts, cauliflower, tomato, increased by 4 to 6% over conventional farming. Moon, onion, chili, cabbage, turmeric, yields were 7 to 14% higher over the conventional farming. So you can get some idea, fair idea how to reply when you are asked about the productivity or yield of crops in organic farming, comparing the conventional. Wheat, mustard, lentil, potato, and rajma yields were 5 to 8% lower than the yield obtained from the conventional farm. So here you get lower yield. The amount of biocarbon, biocarbon, you know, organic carbon, increased by 22% in six years from organic farming. 
number of microbes increase at all the centers of the project. So these are the yield comparisons. And uh, now coming to economics. So you can save your questions uh, uh, at the end of this lecture. I will answer all the questions. So economics is concerned, a gross margin of uh, important, for example, 30 to 40% higher than in conventional cotton. Because 10 to 20% lower total production cost and 20% at least uh, organic price premium. Premium you get. So overall, you can see that 10 to 20% higher income is expected in organic farming. So this is all. Impacts on soil, how the soil health is affected. So reduce soil erosion. Can anybody tell me why there is reduction in soil erosion under organic farming compared to conventional farming? Any idea? Sorry, in the water so organic water Yeah. Continue. One of you can continue. Sir, in increase in water holding capacity decreases enough. That is the main reason of soil erosion occurs in field condition. Yeah, definitely. If you have higher water holding capacity, then the, the runoff will be less. So your erosion. So that is not the one reason. The other important reason is that organic matter ultimately give you humus. And that humus binds the soil particle together. That is also important. And overall, your soil structure is improved. So main answer would be improvement in soil structure. If your soil structure is improved, then water holding capacity is the consequence. Water holding capacity is the consequence of improved soil structure. It is not the reason improved water holding capacity. Uh, so you can see the soil structure is improved, which results in better water holding capacity and binding of the particle means less erosion. Increased soil organic matter. So definitely your microbes or population will be more. Your soil biological health will improve. Physical health will improve and chemical health will improve. As you know, in chemical health, you have soil pH in cation exchange capacity and nutrients. In physical health, you have uh, structure and uh, uh, aggregation, etc. In organic health, or oh, sorry, in biological health, you have uh, your organisms. So higher MBC microbial uh, biomass ca carbon and microbial biomass nitrogen and net mineralization. Okay. So you can see enhanced microbial activity by 20 to 30 percent, enhanced aggregate stability and water ret retention in soil. Now you see, as you told, as you informed, that water holding capacity of the soil increases. So this is just one example from Liu. Uh, volume of water retained per hectare, in one hectare, to 30 centimeter depth in relation to soil organic matter. So this is very general idea, just to give you some idea. If your organic matter is 0.5%, the water in one hectare land, which is 30 centimeter deep, is 80,000 liter. If it is 1% organic matter, it doubles 160,000 liters, 2%, 320,000 liter, and so on. You need not to remember it, but you just see the idea is that if you increase organic matter, the water holding capacity of the soil is increasing. Now, enhanced activity of earthworm is also there and other microorganism, microorganism. Conversion from conventional to organic farming result in increased population of beneficial bacterial board, nematode, while reducing plant parasitic nematode. This is very important, dear student, role of a nematode. Nematode, uh, when you just hear the word nematode, you are annoyed. Okay, nematode means it will cause the disease. It is very problematic. But there are some good nematodes also. If you see the decomposition of organic matter in the soil, or if you see the, the Food web, food web in, in uh, soils, food web in soils will start from green plants. Their roots are there, roots are part of the food web. And there may be organic matter in the soil, there may be leaf fall. So anyhow, organic matter will be there in the soil, which triggers, which triggers the, the food web, the start of the food web. In food web, you have different levels, trophic levels autotrophic, heterotrophic, and so on. 
there are four or five different levels. If you see the food web in soil, at, at each trophic level, nematodes are there. Nematodes are common. Means sometimes they are being eaten by other organisms and sometimes they are eating the others. They are eating the bacteria or eating the fungi. At each trophic level, you will find nematodes. So nematodes have very, very important role in organic matter decomposition also. So some are beneficial uh, nematodes and uh, reduce population of plant parasitic nematode. It has been proved beyond doubt if you add organic matter or if you grow legumes in the system, the parasitic uh, nematodes population decreases. Now, impacts on groundwater and ecosystem. So in groundwater, your leaching of nitrate or other substances will be reduced and greenhouse gases emissions will be low. Nitrate leaching, denitrification, ammonia, volatilization are reduced, therefore improved nitrogen uptake efficiency. In a long-term study in southern Germany, I reduced N2 emissions rates in organic actions. So you see it is environment friendly, I have already discussed. Now we come to the important point, core pillars or component of organic farming. This is actually syllabus of the organic farming. Anybody, any student who is interested to study organic farming, any teacher who want to teach organic farming, any farmer who want to start organic farming, he or she must know these four pillars, stumble. So four pillars are the syllabus of organic farming. Number one, organic standards. Number two, regulatory mechanism. Regulatory me mechanism is also known as certification. Technology packages and market network. So we will see all these four standard four components. They are also called as components of organic farming one by one. So first you see organic standard and certification is the responsibility of national program on organic production. As already discussed with you, NPOP governs or develops the organic standards and it also takes responsibility of certification. Now, you already know that this NPOP was started in 2001 and it is internationally recognized. Means our standards and our certification process is internationally accepted and we accept our product. They import our product equivalence with EU and Switzerland. Here equivalence means give and take. You recognize our standard and we recognize your standard. So that is equivalence, means uh, EU, European Union and Switzerland, we have some understanding that they accept our standard and we accept their, uh, their standard in production. In India, I can produce the, the organic crop by following EU or Switzerland standard and they will be accepted in EU or Switzerland and vice, vice versa. USDA recognized conformity assessment system to our standards. Equivalence with Canada, Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, it is in the process and results are expected soon. 28 accredited certification bodies are there. You need not to remember this 28 number because they keep on changing the certification bodies. 10 are in public sector means government bodies and 18 are private sector. I will let you know what is certification agency. Just have, have little patience. You will know slowly uh, these uh, aspect in detail. So what kind of certification is practiced in India? We uh, certify, uh, uh, we certify the products in crop production. Wild harvest collection means your medicinal ar aromatic plants, or some other harvest forest products, livestock and sericulture, apiculture, aquaculture, food processing, and animal feed processing. So there are number of enterprises, number of areas where India is offering certification process operated by APIDA. Now you go to the organic standards. Just see what is organic standard. So organic standards means it is a written, written document. It is a written uh, guideline which suggests what to do and what not to do in organic farming. What practices are allowed, what are not allowed, what materials or methods you can use in organic farming. It is given in writing, in written, in a document, which is a, a, a called as organic standards. So certain guidelines are officially laid down in document for production, processing and other aspect of organic products. 
means do this, do not do this. Do this through this way. Don't do this through this way. What are the rules for conversion from conventional farming to organic farming? It is uh, three years now. What methods and materials should be used in crop production or any kind of production? For aquaculture, you will have different standard than for crop production or sericulture. All these things are mentioned in organic standards in writing. Indian organic standards have been developed by APIDA and are available on its website. Already told to you, you can see the website to see the standards and also the list of certification agency. So what is there, what, what is written there in the organic standard? What, what constitute the standard? So for example, I'm giving you one example of crop production. Suppose you want to produce crop of say rice, then what, what are the standards? So crop production plan is there. Crop production plan means here, you need to uh, uh, see the guidelines. Here, diversification is suggested. You go for diversification of crops, include the legume in the rotation, follow the crop rotations. I'm not giving the details within each heading, but you can see what are the different components of organic standards in crop production. Conversion requirements, duration of conversion period, landscape, choice of crops and varieties, diversity in crop production and management plan, nutrient management, how to do it, pest disease and weed management, how to go for it. There are already written aspects, written things there. How to control the contamination from conventional to organic. What are the procedures for soil and water conservation? What should be done for conservation of soil and water and collection of non-cultivated material of plant origin or forest products. So the procedures are given in writing. You can see yourself by downloading the organic standards from APIDA website and see what is there in them. And they are to be followed by the farmers in total. Those standards, when a farmer suppose he starts organic farming, he has to, or any practice, apiculture, aquaculture, he must follow the standards or the written document on standards in practice. When he's doing it, he must adopt all these standards or all these procedures laid down for organic standards. So this is important. Now, there has to be somebody which will verify, which will certify that organic standards have been followed in the production or processing process. So somebody needs to certify it. And how can it certify? By uh, It can certify by doing inspection, by doing regular visits, by having observation of organic enterprise. So you need certification. So number two is certification means giving the certificate, giving the certificate to the producer or to the growers or to the farmers or to the processor. So production of certificate or supply of certificate is certification. And what is this certificate? This certificate certifies, certifies that this particular enterprise or this particular production or processing has been done by adopting the standard organic or by adopting the organic standards. That certificate is required. And it is not that that particular uh, certification agency will give certificate uh, by sitting in office. They regularly visit the organic farmer and they see what he's doing, what material he's adding, how it is doing. So all these things are seen or observed by the certification agency. So certification cannot be done by individual. It is to be done by certification bodies. So certification bodies are, are the bodies which do the job of certification. And their accreditation is important. Accreditation of certification agency means authorizing a, an agency to do the job of certification. Accreditation is not a big term. Its meaning is authorizing or giving responsibility to a particular group of people uh, who is interested or who, has, who qualifies to be a certification agency, that is your accreditation. Just authorizing a particular uh, body or particular agency to start or to do the job of certification. So procedure by which the accredited certificate body by way of a scope certificate assure that the production of processing system of the operator has been methodically assessed and conforms to the specified requirements. All the steps in the food production processing to packaging storage are certified. So this is important. 
that all the step, not just production, even transport, even your packaging and then storage, at all the stages of product development, product production are certified. And it is a product certification. So I'm sorry, it is a process certification. It is not a product certification. What is process certification? Means how you have done it, how you have produced it. That is certified. But whatever you have produced, that is not certified. Means suppose you have produced apple, organic apple. Okay, how to produce organic apple? You must have added certain manuals, certain pesticide, biopesticide, so on. Whatever you have done, the process of production has been certified. Certificate says. But once you get the apple, you will let not get, uh, so you, not, you are not able to give the certificate that it is free from pesticide. You cannot test it for pesticide. So it is only the process certification. It is not the product certification. Uh, that is why sometimes consumers are skeptical about it. But in near future, who knows, the product certification will also be there. So this, now you see, uh, there is two kinds of certification. One is third party certification. It is under NPOP. Third party certification and other is participatory guarantee system. There are only two kinds of certification system in India. One is third party. It is called third party because first party is the farmer. Second party is the consumer. Remember, first party is farmer. Second party is consumer. And third party is your uh, certification agency. Certification agency is the third party. Therefore, it is called third party. It is between uh, producer and consumer. Uh, how, how come this party is there? Therefore, it is third party between grower or farmer and consume, consumer. So certification agency is third party. Therefore, it is called as third party certification. Uh, sometimes uh, in your examination, uh, a, a, I asked a question, what is first party cert certification? What is second party certification? What is third party certification? So a student replied, first party means um, uh, where is where this uh, uh, producer is uh, consuming the products. Producer is consuming the products. Producer is also a consumer. Second party when producer is uh, producer is uh, uh, producing and there are two cons two consumers something like that and. Some mathematics was there, so that is not the case. It is third party, uh, means th there is no first party or second party. Just I remember my PhD, Vaiva Vosi, in IRA. The examiner was a very intelligent person. He asked Dinesh, what is, uh, no, no. Other member of the advisory committee asked Dinesh, what is the difference between, between C3 and C4 plant? I gave the difference, whatever I knew, I, I replied the answer, but ex then examiner was angry. He said, what about C5 and C6 plant? Tell me the rule. So we, we need to be very, very cautious when we ask questions. So here it is only third party certification. And what are the things about third party certification that it is mandatory for export. You cannot export your product if it is not third party certified. For export purpose, third party certification is compulsory. But for voluntary and domestic, if you want to sell your product within the country, you need not to go for third party certification. It is voluntary. And those who are going for third party certification, their product, the bag or their product will get India organic logo. You can see the India organic logo on the right side. And then next is participatory guarantee system. Because third party certification is expensive. For one acre area, the certification agency may charge about 40 to 50,000 rupees per acre, which is a huge amount. So farmers cannot pay this. Uh, it can be paid only by those who want to export it or who are rich farmers. So what government did for normal farmer, for general farmers, it is started participatory guarantee system program of certification. So it is also known as PGS India. And it is operated by National Center of Organic and Natural Farming, Gaziabad, which has six, seven centers in the country. And they are doing certification, which is called as PGS. It is applicable only for domestic market 
uh, but you cannot export it. The product cannot be exported if you have PGS certification. See the differences in NPOP certification or third party certification and PGS. Based as uh, at on uh, based on national organic standards, it is also based on national organic standard (NSOP) national standard of organic production (NSOP) national standard of organic production. Exhaustive documentation and third party verification. This this is simple documentation. Regional council is facilitator. I will not go into the detail of PGS because that is not part of this course. Procedures widely accepted not accepted widely in case of PGS. So more reliable is NPOP, cost intensive, low cost. So it is free of cost actually. Applicable for individuals, growers, group processing facilities. Applicable only on grower groups. So PGS is in when farmers go for group certification. This is also kind of group certification. Now, one emerging regulatory scenario is also there. If you don't bother about it, I will, uh, I will make you understand in one or two lines these lines, I will make you understand. So what happened uh, to increase the consumer's confidence in organic products? This FSS AI, food, uh, what is the full form of FSS AI? FSS AI, food safety and standard authority of India. Yes. Yes, it's Food good. safety standard authority of India. Good. I'll just let me check. I forget usually. Uh, food safety and standard authority of India. Yeah. Food safety and standard authority of India. FSSAI. So now on organic products, when you are selling domestic in the domestic market, you must get well, this Javik Bharat. Javik Bharat logo, one of them, one is in Hindi, other is in English. So one of these logos should be there on the organic product along with FSS AI number. Some number will be there, this code will be there. So this is mandatory in local market. But a very recent order, FSS, I, FSS AI has declared that farmers who are earning, uh, whose turnover is less than 12 lakhs per year. Farmers whose turnover is less than 12 lakhs per year will not require this logo, Javik Bharat logo means this is not compulsory. However, farmers or any body, anybody having a turnover of more than 12 lakhs from organic production will have to have this logo on the product. So this is the message. So sometimes you will find this logo also, Javik Bharat. Now technology package, the third one is technology package means how, how to do it, how to grow it how to make the choice of variety, choice of crop, crop rotations, sowing time, tillage operation, nutrient management, weed, insect pests. So this is your technology package. This is being done by research. What should be the sowing of time? Do we have same sowing of time? What should be the intercropping combination, varieties and so on? Means crop production package, we need to learn, farmer need to know, and it is getting evolved. Up to now, we were doing research, evolving production technology for conventional farming, now in India also, we are doing this job to evolve the production technology. So third important component of organic farming is technology package. And technology package, for example, nutrient management, you can go through this slide about the organic inputs. So there are a number of organic inputs and research can be done on this and people are making uh, the recommendations also. So there are a number of organic nutrient resources like crop rotation, farmyard manure, green manure, coir pith, or farm resources. So these are the resources to supply nutrients. There are certain minerals also, which, which are allowed in organic farming. Mineral like sulfur, gypsum, rock phosphate. The minerals which are there in the natural form, if you apply them directly, you can apply them. Now coming to, to the, in the technology package also, you need to find out the insect pests and disease and weeds management. If it is uh, insect pests or disease of management, et cetera, I, I suggested you to go for integrated pest management minus chemicals. So a lot of options are there for organic pest management minus chemical. You can go through these. These must be studied by you at UG level. Now this example I want to teach you, I want to tell you 
this is very important how intercoping system can help to control the insect pest and disease or here insect and weeds insect and weeds can be controlled uh, by intercoping system this is known as push and pull push and pull for stem borer and stiga try to understand this is important so this is known as push and pull theory of stem borer and stiga control here students you may be knowing that maize maize uh, bajra palmlet and sorghum these three crops have problem of stem borer stem borer are uh, larvae will enter the stem uh, on the from the uh, near the ground area and it will eat the stem and then your plant may may dry up it may fall so stem borer is also there another problem in these crops sorghum palmlet and uh, maize is stiga stiga is semi root parasite semi root parasite stiga is a weed weed in palmlet or sorghum this stiga is semi root parasite its root are attached to the roots of uh, these crops or maize crops and it takes out nutrients and water however it is capable of doing little photosynthesis so that is how it is suffering from two problems the maize sorghum and palmlet so either of these crop can be uh, cropped here like this and then uh, desmodium desmodium can be taken as an intercrop intercrop desmodium can be taken between two rows of maize palmlet you can take one row of desmodium so desmodium is a leguminous plant and it gives very good quality fodder it is it is a succulent plant it gives you good quality fodder so what happens the stem borer as you know is student that these borers are lepidopterous mostly and they have four different stages egg egg and then larvae or caterpillar then pupa then adult so it starts from adult the adult female will lay down eggs on the on the maize plant or sorghum plant and those eggs can hatch into pupa and they can uh, they can attack the the plant but what happens this uh, desmodium when desmodium grows it releases certain volatile compounds from the leaves or from the shoot part and that volatile compounds pushes the pushes the insect away this uh, insect adult adult female cannot tolerate the volatile smell of the volatile compounds and it runs away from the maize plant it will not come to the maize plant because of volatile released by the desmodium plant now what happens on the boundary on the boundary you have planted napier grass so all around the field you need to have one row of napier grass napier grass is penicetum purpureum so this grass is there and this grass also releases some volatile compounds which attract the female adult this napier grass will attract the female adult and this female adult will lay down the eggs on the napier grass leaves and then the 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 eggs will be killed this grass besides attracting the female it will also kill the egg masses so it will kill the eggs of the stem borer so therefore stem borer is born similarly stiga stiga what happens this uh, uh, this desmodium roots will release certain volatile compounds or certain chemicals those will kill the germinating or the 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 stiga plant so therefore you can see weed is control insect is control and this practice is quite common in kenya and some african countries you can browse it you will found thousand more than 10000 millions of pages on this push and pull for stem borer and stiga control and friends this is also called as ecological engineering it is part of entomology discipline it is ecological engineering you are learning from the ecology and applying those ecological principles into the practice under field condition cook et al 2007 the fourth component of organic farming is marketing network how to sell your product so why a consumer should buy organic product the preference of organic products from the consumer side is that most of the consumers think that organic products are healthy therefore they buy it the next uh, preference is because of environment some people like to buy organic product uh, because it is 
uh, production is environment friendly. This is the reason, number two reason for the choice of organic product. Number three is taste, people consider taste. Number four, some people say that it is animal welfare. Means here antibiotics, antibiotics will not be fed to the animal. Minimal processing, novelty and fashion. So these are the uh, uh, reasons why people want to buy organic product. On the right side, why they don't want to buy? The number one reason is high price, limited availability, skepticism, credibility is doubtful, whether it is organic or not, poor appearance sometimes, non-awareness, and a contentment with existing products. So this is how marketing. There are a number of ways, number of channels for marketing. Whatever existing uh, marketing channels are available for existing products, conventional products, same channels can be used for marketing of organic products. But here some, is, some special models have been done, developed by different farmers, middlemen, and so on. But less, latest thing in the marketing is Javi Kheti portal by government of India, uh, www.javikheti.in. You can go there. Here all people who want to sell it, who want to buy it, uh, all the people are in one platform here. It is totally online system sell and buy and one can do input and output marketing. One can do marketing for input, means your biofertilizer, your manures, your biopesticides. Outputs are your products you produce or process products. Now, what are the scopes of organic farming? So we have great, bio, great diversity in the India, climatic condition, great potential. So at one particular point of time, we will have a commodity, a fresh commodity like your green peas or like your cooker bits can be found around the years. So research, extension, education opportunities are there. Export can be done. Employment generation can be done. Raw materials can be converted into value-added products. Certification also give employment. Crop diversification also results in employment. And there are certain scope or opportunities like uh, India has divided organic uh, area into three. First tier states where organic farming can be directly implemented because of very less use of insecticide, pesticide and fertilizers. So such area are Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland. Second tier states, the, the state where uh, consumption of fertilizer and uh, pesticide is less, but higher than the first tier states, less than the three tier states. So in these areas, certain pockets can be selected for organic farming, Assam, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, and towards organic states here, Nobody is recommending integrated uh, organic farming. One should go for uh, conventional farming or integrated farming system. Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal, UP, Punjab, Haryana. So this is how organic farming should be adopted in the country. And you can see the area and crops, niche crops for uh, promotion. In which state, which crop should be promoted under organic farming, like MP, soybean, finger millet, hilly regions, turmeric, ginger, tribal areas, so on. So you get, uh, you can go through this list. There are certain constraints in organic farming, shortage of organic seed, lack of efficient. You can go through this, or I can discuss uh, these constraints in, uh, after this uh, time is over, say one minute more is there. So overall qualitative assessment, or or if you, can, if you have patience of 10 minutes more, then I, I can complete this part. However, from my side, it is over. So you can go through these pages, I think, or we can have discussion. So do you have patience for next 10, 15 minutes also, or you want your uh, to leave now. It is up to you. I cannot bound you, or uh, sometimes it may be uh, undesirable also. So, welcome back. For example, for irrigated region of Punjab, Haryana, the basmati, rice, maize, turmeric, onion, garlic, for Rajasthan, coriander, fennel, spices, for rain fed region of Gujarat, cotton. So now there are a number of constraints, shortage of organic seeds. So that is a big question because where from the 
first seed will come where from the first seed will come suppose i have undergone the uh, the conversion period i have completed 3 years conversion period now my land is organic i want to grow organic cotton so where from i will get the organic seed of the cotton so that is a limitation first time uh, for getting seed first time second time okay i have produced cotton if it is hybrid then again i i cannot get the seed if it is local coat local variety or desi variety i can get so shortage of organic seed is limitation but there is exemption uh, dear students in this case suppose first time you are you are uh, uh, starting organic farming so you can get seed from the conventional farming conventional farming you can get the seed provided seed treatment is not done you must have applied or used chemicals while growing a conventional crop but it can be used as a seed first seed for organic crop if you have not treated it with pesticide or chemicals so therefore seed from conventional farming is uh, uh, is permitted uh, first time if it is not treated with chemicals lack of efficient marketing system from farmer to consumer so that is the main reason that farmers are suffering in india forget about organic product it happens with the conventional product also farmers are not able to get the remunerative prices even see the now onion onion which used to be sold at 40 50 rupees now it is really very shameful that it is being sold at very cheap rate and farmers are selling 3 rupees 2 rupees a kg so it can happen to organic product also because farmers do not have any bargaining power lower crop yields in some cases it is not rosy picture always sometimes you can get lower yield in organic farming also which is a limitation low income during transition period for first 3 years it is low income because yields are low your product is not organic but your uh, input is is same non availability of premium prices of organic products for farmer remember for farmer consumer is paying lot of money for organic product but the share of farmer is very less in consumer's price that is the problem lack of technology package for varying crops we are still in the process of development of technologies for organic farming if you remember there are four component standard certification technology package and marketing limited availability of organic manures and bio fertilizers complex city in certification process weak linkages lack of infrastructure high cost of certain inputs i can explain all these uh, points but it takes time therefore i i just avoid it uh, now the last two slides you can see overall qualitative assessment of organic farming this is very interesting data uh, you can see organic farm farming performs double plus if anywhere you find double plus that means organic farming performs much better over the conventional farming one plus means better over conventional farming zero means the organic and conventional farming are same one minus means worse organic farming is worse than conventional farming if you get two minus sign then organic farming is much worse than conventional farming so this is very interesting study made by gomiro in 2011 so it was based upon several papers they synthesized or compiled and they found these kind of relationship between organic and conventional systems of farming for example productivity as yield per hectare yield per hectare sometimes under some conditions it can be better under some condition it can be equal but under many condition it can become minus or minus means worse or it can become much worse now see about the biodiversity crop diversity you do not have any negative here crop diversity is always there plus plus means uh, it is much better better and the same at most it can be same so similarly flora diversity all plus all plus all plus only one minus so you can see microbial biomass microbial activity mycorrhiza biodiversity and so on so you are seeing many pluses here similarly here also you see uh, ground and surface water quality mostly plus your greenhouse gas emission mostly plus so these are the advantage of organic farming you can see farm input and output nutrient use mostly plus 
animal welfare, mostly plus. So you can see, but in some cases, you find minus also, like quality of food product, like nitrate plus zero minus mycotoxin plus zero minus. So you can study these two slides also, and it completes the presentation. And finally, uh, you can have your questions. If you have questions, you are most welcome to ask on certification, on technology, on uh, marketing, on uh, what is left, uh, your yeah, four component, standards, uh, certification, technology package, and marketing. All are important components of organic farming. If you have any question on limitations, on advantage, disadvantage, whatever question you wish to ask on organic farming, you are most welcome. I will be very pleased to answer your questions. No question, Navneet? You have any question? No, sir. Shalini? No, sir. Okay. SG Sarovar or anybody, anybody can come. Just... Uh, Sir, I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, uh, as we know, in organic farming, uh, organic matters incorporate into the soil. And also in organic uh, organic matters, allelopathic chemicals are there. So is any recommendation for uh, uh, organic matter incorporation in soil uh, 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 for uh, allelopathic effect or uh, not? Uh, he's saying that these manures, manures are ultimately coming from the plant. We base is plant, we say farmyard manure or any, any manure. Their base is plant because animals feed on plant and ultimately your organic material is, uh, uh, you see, recycled back to the, to the plant or soil. So uh, the same plant or different plant will be there. The variety of plants will be there eaten by animals. Do we have any study on allelopathic effect of farmyard manure? The answer is no. Because in organic farming, not much work, not much research work has been done on these aspects. So therefore, information is not available. Good on. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Shubham, Purvasa, Atul, Abhishek, Chandrakant, Hachappa, Huchappa. Huchappa, you have any question? No, sir. Tripti? No, sir. No, sir. Should I ask question from you if you don't if you know everything about organic farming? Hmm? Anyway, if you uh, if any question is left, you can ask me through email. Thank you very much. And I the only two lectures are left for me tomorrow and Monday, and then uh, I will finish. Uh, my course will be finished. Thank you very much. Have a nice time. And extremely sorry to uh, to spoil your holiday. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.